So now that you're done with making the, the three different pieces, your two top and bottom pieces, your two side pieces, and your back piece, remember the side pieces and the top and the bottom are going to be the same. Uh, so really only three pieces that we're putting together to make this box. Now we're going to go ahead and put this together. So we've got our assembly environment here. So we'll click on New Assembly. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure if that part will come up for you, but uh, if it does, you can just hit OK. So what we're going to do here is we're going to place components. Now, normally, this will probably just say place, and you can click right on the icon, but we're just doing the normal place uh, either way. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, maybe start with the, the bottom. So the bottom is the same as the top. So I'll just go ahead and open the top up, and we click to put it in once. Um, and actually, we're going to need two, so I'll go ahead and put it in twice and hit OK. Now, at this point, what we're going to notice here is it's kind of sideways, which is OK. There's nothing really wrong with that. Um, but just kind of realizing that you know this is kind of the way it normally sits because it's the bottom of the box. So what we're going to do is go ahead and the first step is just going to be to ground the very first piece. So make sure that first piece is selected and we're going to ground it. That means that piece isn't going to move. The top still hasn't been connected yet. Um, so the top is still going to be able to move. Uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and put in the, the sides and the uh, the back. So I need my sides. Open those up. There are two of those. I'm just going to place them in there and hit OK. And then I'm going to put in my back. There's just one of those. And hit OK. Now, it doesn't actually matter where these are. What we're going to do to, to put these together is use our constrain tool. And our constrain tool, the one we're going to be using is mate. And there's two solutions, either mate edge to edge or flush, which means our edges are going to be flat against each other. And so, for example, first of all, I might want to put uh, use the flush tool. And I want to say this edge is actually got to be flush with that edge. And so if you hit apply there, what you'll notice is that now those two edges right there line up. I can move them this way and I can move it up and down but they, those two edges are always going to line up. Um, I can do the same thing on the other one now. Just using that flush constraint. And I want to make that flush with the very front of my box. And you'll notice that automatically turned those parts to line up. The next thing I want to do is they shouldn't be able to move this way either. So I'll do another constraint. This would be another good place for the flush tool. The edge of this box should, or edge of this side, should be flush with the edge of that. And the same thing, if I rotate my my picture over, this one should be flush with that one. Now, if you notice here at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it back to where it was. They can still move up and down. And in order to pin these down, in order to constrain these where I want them, I need to make sure that the bottom of this piece is matched up with the bottom of that piece. So this time I am actually using this normal mate constraint, and I want the bottom of that, the top of the bottom, I guess, to match up with that part. And what you'll notice is that when I did that, it automatically put my box, my piece bottom of my box right there. So now it doesn't move. I get this little no, you can't move me symbol. Uh, at this point, a good option here, if we change our visual style to shaded with edges, we're just going to get a little bit more visual kind of clue as to what's going on. I'm going to rotate this around and we'll do the same thing with our other side. Under the Assemble tab, Constrain, use the Mate constraint, and we'll mate the bottom of that to our bottom of our box. Okay, next up we could either do a couple of things. We could put the top on the box or we could put the back in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's just put the top on the box. So one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the, the Flush constraint again. This edge should be flush with that edge, and then this should be flush with the front. At this point now, all it can do is move up and down, and so I'm going to add those same mate constraints I did before, from this time from the top of that to my top of my box. And so at this point, I've got a box where none of it can move. Everything's constrained, everything's held together. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and put the back of my box in. One thing you'll notice is this is turned sideways, which is okay. Um, I'm going to use my mate constraint here, and this edge here is going to be mated up actually against that edge. Now, it's still sitting kind of flat here, so I'm going to say I'm going to use the flush constraint. This is the back of my box, and that's got to be flush with that part. 
And then the only thing that it can still do is it still can move up and down in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add one more. We'll use the mate constraint. And I know that has to match up with that part there. Now at this point, we got to check a couple of things. First of all, none of our pieces should move. Um, a good way to check on that, turn it around here. I'm going to make that my, my home view. You can right click and set set as home if you need to do that. So now at least my home view is going to get me back here. So one thing I can do here, I can go under, I believe it's the view tab, and I can click on degrees of freedom, and you're going to see there are none, which is great. I don't want there to be any. Um, the last thing I can do is make sure there's no overlap. And so what I can do is I can hit analyze interference, define set one, I'll make as those pieces, and then set two I'll make as the other pieces, and I'll just hit OK. No interference is detected. That means none of my pieces are actually overlapping each other, so my box does work correctly. Uh, and so that's all there is to assembling something simple like a box. There are, as you kind of noticed, there's a lot more constraints in here that we'll get into later. Um, we'll probably get into those right before winter break. Uh, but for now, we've got our box assembled, and we are ready to actually go and make this thing.